and where it goes through together. This left arm shaft hangs off the shoulder. Well, the shoulder is the center then of the arm swing. What I talked about was the head being the center of the pivot. They're different. So this center of the arm swing now, because I've got a centered pivot, has a circle that it can move around. So the spine is the axis, becomes the center of the shoulder turn. The shoulder itself becomes the center of the arm swing. See how that works? So it's really kind of important that we get those relationships down. Uh, and we can generate all of our power, all of our throw-out motion, uh, realizing those relationships. Now, there's lots to be said about the plane and what the feet and the knees and so forth do. Let me just, just briefly, I teach a very simple motion. <laughs> if you can walk, if you can walk and swing your arms, to avoid people like this, but if you can walk and swing, and swing your arms, you can probably play a pretty good game of golf because basically we're doing this, right, left, right, left, right, left. And if we get that going in a nice little swing, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Ever see Davis Love Waggle? Right, left, right, left, right, left. His feet come totally off the ground when he does it. Ever see Ray Floyd get ready to play a chip shot? Right, left, right, left, right, left. Ever hear Byron Nelson? Maybe not. <laughs> Talk about the rocking chair. Right, left, right, left, right, left. That's what he taught Tom Watson. If you don't move here, this shoulder stays high and you run out of right arm and the wrist spins. But this simple motion, right, left. Notice my head's not moving. Right, left, right. Right, left, right, left. And it coordinates. Right, left, right. And you see that? I don't get to the top like this because I have a little turn. Turn of the hips, turn of the shoulders. And by the way, that right shoulder? We're on a plane, huh? We're on a plane. That shoulder goes back to the plane, ideally. Do this for me. First of all, uh, pretend uh, you got a lasso. Do a lasso for me. Okay, good. Now, did you think for one second about your body, your shoulder, taking your hand up? No. You just took your hand up so you could do the lasso. Your hands had an assignment. The shoulder said, well, it's time for me to get in, get in gear because you could have got, this is as high as you could have got your hand if you didn't use your shoulder. So your body responded to the demand of your hands, and that's really important. You just made, you, know, you got inner pivot, you got feet, you got knees, you got hips, you got shoulders, so there's six uh, components, if you include the hip action and the motion of the pivot itself, that's full 25% of that 24 I talked to you about. So this is a really important thing, but it was controlled by what your hand wanted to do. That really is important. All right, let's, all right, let's say we, you want to throw a baseball out into here. And give me that. From your seat, just here and just throw it out here. I'm going to do it. Do this. This is interactive. Here. All right. No, no, not. This doesn't qualify. I mean, th I want it to go throw it to here. All right, make them not. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be different. Try not to knock the guy behind you. Yeah, throw it out there. Now, I want you to. Uh, now, let's be aware of something. Just go back to where you had your hand. Do you feel your right shoulder moving back? And if you're left handed, feel your left shoulder moving back? That's a shoulder turn. Close your eyes and feel it. That's a shoulder turn. Right? So here's your golf swing. Here. I'm, instead of throwing it this way, I'm throwing it that way. But I didn't do this and then put my hand there. If I'm going to pick up that stick, I'm just going to pick up the stick. Boom. I'm not going to say, well, now, if I move over here like that, and if I shift my weight like that, if I get my shoulder here, then if I extend my arm, my hand will be in a place to pick it up. Doesn't work that way. So you can go around letting your body have it its way with your hands and arms all you want to, but it's a lot better if it coordinates with the arms and the hands. It's the way you do everything else in life. Okay, so you're flipping the pages, I hope. <sighs> Pivot, I like centered. You don't get a lot of this back lean this way. You get that if you got your head over here, but if you got your head here, your back straight. I'm giving you some examples. Larry Nelson, for example, centered. At the top, centered. That's old Larry over here on the left. <laughs> We've been buddies for a long time, so he won't mind me saying that. 55 years old. This is when he's 25, 6 years old on the right when he was player of the year, or uh, most improved player of the year on the PGA Tour. So there's about 30 years separating those two pictures. It's a little bigger <clears throat> in certain areas, <laughs> but the action is identical. Somebody asked me one time, does Larry Nelson study the golfing machine? I said, like, Larry Nelson is a golfing machine. <laughs> Over here on the right side, you see, I should be clicking through here, sorry guys. 
Give me, uh, give me. <laughs> All right, so we're here. We got the pivot there. Look at Mr. Hogan. Boom. You know, there's a book, Power Golf, 1948, that shows a lot of this backward leaning this way with Hogan. And a lot of people took that as being the way to do it. We went into Photoshop and took the parallax out of those pictures. He's as straight up and down in 1948 as he was over here in 1955. So in some cases, the camera does lie. 1927, Bob McDonald. He was a Met champion, could play, and he wrote a book way ahead of his time. In fact, it's still ahead of his time. And he has this right, left, right, left business. You're in here. And you're pulling that shoulder back. Yeah, you want that shoulder work. Mm, throw it back. So that's, that's where the plane is. You want the ball, the shoulder, and the hands all aligned. Bang. That way. You don't want the hands down. Ideally, Matt Kuchar, she doesn't have to give you any money back. <laughs> that's a low plane. And you can get away with it. And Mr. Fierig didn't have to get back any either. It's absolutely vertical. But they come back into what Bill Melhorn called the direct line. But it's better ideally, to have the shoulder and the hands all aligned. Notice that the left arm is not on the plane. It may be on the plane of the shoulder, but the shoulder is not on the plane of the ball. It's pointing out there. The ball is down here. That's where we want to be. All right, so we center the head. Bob McDonald gave us some great drills. Great Ravielli. You see the illustration there on the bottom left of page five. You see the centered head of Mr. Jones. And uh, then you see, look at, look at Hogan's here we go. Come on. We're going to, uh, yeah, just, just click through there if you would, please. More. Yeah, look at those lines. Isn't that just gorgeous? That's golf, guys. That's precision golf. No moving around, no bobbing, no sway. There. A line directed between the feet. Look at Joe Hogan as he winds up here. I love Ravielli because he makes, in his drawings, he makes these things come alive. You can see this whole wind up of the right side, this way. What, what's Greg Norman's uh, big deal during his uh, playing career when he wanted to, you know, give it a little extra? RPB, what does that stand for? RPB, right pocket back. Right pocket back. They asked Watson, how do you start your backswing? I take my right hip off the line. They asked Lanny Watkins, I take my right hip off the line. Jack Nicholas, he asked me about his left hip. He's like, left hip? I haven't thought about my left hip in my life. <laughs> I'll take my right hip and shoulder off the line. So you can see this wind up that Mr. Hogan is doing. No way is he going this way. We have tried to be like Hogan by doing all this stuff. And Hogan wasn't there. Hogan was here. Then he was there. That's different. <laughs> by the way, look at Mr. Jones here on the right. Yes, as you turn away, the great preponderance of the body mass moves to the right, so your weight shifts, but you didn't shift. You're still centered. And then as start down, you move definitely to the left, and by release, you're almost all on your left side. Those are the illustrations at the bottom of page five. And look at the great Larry Nelson, the most feared Ryder Cupper of his generation, the only one of only three men to win three majors in the 1980s. And sneaky long? No, he was just long. <laughs> Plain and simple. And you can see this here as he comes down so, from here, boom. He is solid there. That's what tilts the spine. Not getting back here and tilting this way. You're on the plane. You don't tilt under it. You drive down it. Can you see that? And all that time supporting the hands and the sweet spot. So we see that. Now, power package. How am I doing on time? About about 10. Okay. Uh, this power package, the triangle assembly. Eh, okay. There'll be some toes stepped on here. Sorry about that. Uh, the two arms, the club. We've been told to preserve the triangle. Huh. The law of the triangle, well, what's the structure of the triangle? The left arm, the shoulder line, and the right arm. The normal condition of the arms are the left arm is always extended and the right arm is always bent until the end of the follow through, which by definition is the both arm straight position. We start off here, this way. Now notice if I've got the right shoulder alignments, look, I do this for me. Reach out, take your left wrist with your right thumb and forefinger, okay? Get some kidding. Come on, do this. Everybody, here you go. Now, I want you to stretch that left arm in the direction it's pointing with your right arm. Now, you don't do this. You cannot make your right arm straight, can you? Try as hard as you want to. Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's, on, it's attached to this shoulder, and that's attached to this shoulder. Boom. Well, this is what you ought to be feeling here. See? This way. So you can't straighten that arm, even though you're trying to. This is the secret of width. Now, Hogan... 
We all read uh, in five lessons where he talked about the upper arms and how he tried to feel them adhering closely to the sides of his chest, right? And so then he felt like his arms were could go back and through the same way every time in response to his, well, I'll just call it the right, left, right, left. And so we, all of a sudden, and he, oh, and he wanted your elbows here. Have we got that? So he got the elbows all tucked in, elbows this way, force going that way. See, alignments, some alignments you can see, some alignments you can't see. And I'm about to show you one of the most important alignments in golf, and you can't see it. And that's this direction of stretch right there. And as I get, get back to the triangle for one second, so the only way for me to keep my already straight right arm is to roll, we have a name for that now, right? Roll is to the left, is to roll that wrist here and get into here. And by the way, that kind of does some stuff with the shoulder. The shoulder's now going down instead of toward the plane, which is where it ought to go. Here's your plane, left shoulder down, right shoulder up, hands back in it. You know, this is a dysfunctional, this puts the fun back in dysfunction. <laughs> okay, so what's Mr. Hogan feeling? I mean, is he kidding us? No, we couldn't get from his mind. He knew what he was doing. He felt this adhesion. Now do this one more time. Stretch that arm out. First of all, do you feel your right triceps? Huh? You do, don't you? Where are your right triceps located? In the upper part of your right arm, right? How about your left triceps? Use that a little bit too. You feel that? So I think we can argue or stipulate that we, we feel upper arms, which is what Hogan felt. But we're not feeling a pressure that goes this way. We're feeling a pressure that goes downward. See, the, look at the line. There's the club shape. There, my stretch is there, here. I'm stretching all the time this way, all the time this way, all the time this way, all the time. I'm stretching this string. That's what's important. This rod, this is having no trouble staying straight. This is centered arc. It's having no trouble. Scientists, physicists call this a tension force. Don't be afraid of tension word. It, it is a tension. And we could have a light, nice conversation about that, but there's a tension force. You need to put this tension force. Remember my bottle cap example? Machine, if that machine's wobbly up top, you're going to get wobbly results. If you're all wobbly in here, you're going to get wobble too. This is extensor action. That's what we call it. See this? This is the function. And then it's delivered into here. Bang, and it straightens. This is the function of the left arm. Bang. And then there's the function of the right arm. So that's your concept, not this. <laughs> now, Hogan didn't do it that way, as you can see, on the left. So, you know, I guess one of the reasons I feel the way I do about it is that I probably hit 100,000 golf balls like that, relying on that. Then came the day I actually saw the way he was, which is there. By the way, can you do this? Can you just have your right arm bent, your left arm's extended, and your head centered? and go to here. That's where Hogan is. <laughs> That's not difficult. You can learn that. Precision alignments. All right. Now, look at over here on page eight. What we're talking about is thrust that does not accelerate. We know what accelerating thrust is. That's what moves the club. Nothing happens till the club moves, that's for sure. But this is thrust that is there but does not move the club. It is exactly the same force that is in these suspension bridges that we see all around the world. You don't think they're not thrust there? Cut one of those wires. Bang! <laughs> There's tremendous power there, but it's not accelerating. This gives your two arms, your triangle assembly, mass. Your power package structure now has mass. At impact, you're going to deliver a cord, a, about a ton of force at the ball. That's not the time to firm up. <laughs> and what did... Uh, Mr. Mo Norman say he liked best about his swing. My extension, my extension, and how well I hit my positions. And my straight line that goes through the, right through the golf course, it starts from the first tee and goes to the 18th green. Mm -hmm. See? Extension. Very important concepts. All right, the, we got the plane angles. Plane angles, you can be on a, I mean, two planes. How about elbow plane? How about hands plane? How about turn shoulder plane? How about a squared shoulder plane? And then for Mr. Furyk, how about a turning shoulder plane? So there's five defined angles right there. And they all make sense because we're aligning something with the ball instead of with a shoulder or another piece or whatever, the puzzle. The ball's what we've got to stay in plane with, not the... And this is the point right here, by the way. This point, that right forefinger, that index, 
That's what, now I know it coming in like this, but that's what, you're picking up that pressure right there. That's the important thing. And that's what you're directing through the ball, and that's what you're coming right down. You're coming right down the baseline of this plane. We call this tracing. There. Can you see it? There's the baseline of the plane. There's your plane, pitched roof. There's the gutter. I stay on that plane by tracing it with my right forearm, which I set on the plane this way. I got to move to uh, talk to you about that because it's really important. Bang, here, this way. And I'm pointing right at that baseline. Then the swing becomes this. There. So it's really important what this pressure point does, what the flat left wrist does, and what the right forearm does. Now, interestingly, Ravielli became really good at understanding. He was a supreme mechanic anyway. He could draw muscularly and all that business. He never really got to be a good golfer. But look what he's doing here on page 11. Here, this, this, this drawing to the left, if you were to read the text below, it's all about the left arm, the left arm, the left arm. Notice the left arm has no scratches in there. Uh, Ravielli used what he called the scratch board technique. But look what's scratched in. It's the right arm. That's what's picking up the load. That's what's behind and supporting the shaft. That's what's going to be here. And if it goes to horizontal, it comes down and loads against that knuckle. And so your right forearm is still supporting it. Right forearm support, right forearm support. Do you go back to here? Oh, got to get my elbows together. Oh, sorry, just ruined the whole deal. There, <laughs> here. So that's really important. And then look here on the, on, the, on the left, on the right here on page 11, top one. Look at this. There's nothing scratched in his left arm. It's just a piece of string. All it's doing is holding the club head in orbit around the shoulder. Right arm, boom, into here. Pivot delivers it. Centrifugal force for swingers throws it out. Hitters drive it out. Totally different motions. You can see up here over here on page 10, bottom frames. I'm showing uh, Brian Gay, my student, at the top of the turn show. Shot 62 yesterday, by the way, 10 under, and uh, uh, best round by two. <laughs> Another check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right all right very quickly look at the difference here i don't have time to explain hinge action but basically what we're saying with hinge action is that how you position a pin if it were in your shoulder the club face would close only the club face would lay back only or the club face would simultaneously close and lay back so you can get total control of this club face by uh, making your wrist duplicate the blade of a hinge with a given hinge pin mounting 45 minutes uh, is nowhere near enough to discuss that concept. Now notice here, I've put up the frames. Look at David Toms versus Sergio. Sergio's got all this, quote, lag, right? There. David Toms is here. He's already been to his top. He's not coming this way. This is not a backswing picture for David. It looks like throwaway. In fact, Kip Henley, uh, Brian Gay's caddy, <laughs> he calls it throwaway and save. Same move as K.J. Choi. Same move as Andre Romero. I said, hey, because I just had a little funny thing. Kip Henley, Tennessee section, PGA Pro, Brian Gay's caddy, the week before Whistling Straits, took a week off and went out and won their section championship by 12 shots. He will be playing in the PNC, and he will be at Memphis. <laughs> Which is Memphis, Tennessee, right? This guy's carrying the bag. <laughs> Just another student's success story. <laughs> now look here. I have another student's success story over here on the right, page 13. Look where Ted Ford is at the top. Now, this is only a wedge, but it's, that's about where his driver gets to. This is where hitters like to go to. Why? They're loading their right elbow, getting ready to drive it. The swinger is loading the left wrist, getting ready to throw it out. Now, so David goes all the way back to here, and then once he gets rid of all that nonsense that he really didn't want to do in the first place, it's KJ the same way, Andre the same way, they got rid of that. So Kip calls that throw away and save. Now I'm where I wanted to be all along. Boom. <laughs> All right, so lots going on there. So much to talk about. Let me, are we done? All right, let me say one last thing. I, my goal for you, become craftsman. This teaching golf is an art form. It requires great dedication. Alignments give you the tools to do that. If all you can do today is to saw a clean line, well, by golly, let that be it. Or if a hammer a nail straight, we'll do that. But you can learn these things one at a time. Today is Monday. The finish has five perfect alignments, five of them. Learn one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, one on Friday. 
You got it for the rest of your life. There's only 12 sections of the stroke. If you spent a whole month learning each of these 45 alignments that are in this, well, you know, you're done in uh, a year. And you own this. If you can do one a day for 45 days, you've got the whole thing in a month and a half. So, and then you will be the go-to guy because most people won't pay that price. But it's so simple. Where do you, how do you get the time to do it? You're standing in the, comp, comp, the grocery store line. You're, you're pumping gas. You're in the post office line. Carry your little note card. Okay? Finish swivel, left wrist alignment, hands location, club shaft position, body position, and balance. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure being with you. Questions? <laughs>